Welcome back, Wolfpack. Verl is here, and this is how to use Alolan Golem. Guys, I am super excited for this video because Alolan Golem is super fun. But first, let's go and check out the Rock Electrotyping. Not as fun because we do have a few weaknesses to worry about. Fighting ground, water, and grass with a four times super effective weakness to ground. So that's going to be pretty bad right there. Now, we do have a pretty solid tanky setup with our defenses. So we might be able to survive some fighting hits and maybe physical water and grass. But overall, stay away from ground and then we might be okay. On that, we only pick up a couple of resistances. And we have normal, flying, poison, fire, and electric. So not really big on the resistances, even though it looks like a very resistive Pokemon. Everything else is going to be a neutral hit. Looking at the Rock Electrotyping offensively, it covers out pretty well. That ground is going to give us the most problem, so four times on our weakness. We can't hit it with Electric, and then we're resisted by Rock. But everything else is going to go pretty well, and then Rock has a good amount of super effective hits with Bug, Fire, Flying, Ice, and then Electric hitting Flying and Water-type Pokemon. So a little bit of an overlap, but we should be okay. Looking at Lolan Golem stats, they're the exact same as regular Golem, so pretty much just 80 on the hit points, 120 attack, 130 on the defense. So between the hit points and defense, we can survive some of those hits right there. 65 special defense is unfortunate, and we have 45 on the speed. So pretty much just bulky, max attack offensive, let's go. But now it's time to go over to Cerebi and talk about why I'm so excited to see and talk about the Golem, because it gets Galvanized. So Galvanize is like Pixel 8, Aerial 8, it's one of those 8 abilities where it boosts a normal type move and then turns it into a different typing. Galvanize makes it electric, so we have an electric type Pokemon getting that electric boost, and also Golem gets the explosion, it makes return very powerful, it's pretty awesome. So 20% 20 20 boost to normal type, and then makes it electric. Other than that, it's going to be very similar uh, moveset stuff compared to a regular Golem, that we're just going to go and use something like the Stone Edge, we can set up Stealth Rocks, we can maybe even like Rock Polish or Totemize if we want to go for that, and then we have some other interesting little tech that we can run maybe go for something like an earthquake You know our coverage is going to be similar except now you have more electric things that you can thread in and then you're just galvanized for the big damage Hopping into Pokemon showdown. I'm gonna be honest with you guys Everything on this move set is a formality It's just there because it's there where you're, all you're here to do with golem is choice band explosion for the highest first turn damage in all of Pokemon like that's why I'm doing the galvanized damage boosting into explosion choice band 120 attack just insane amounts of damage coming out of this Pokemon right here now people will say that like oh Shuckle has the most damage yeah after like a bajillion turns of setup this is just outright kill something and it even breaks through defensive Pokemon now, if a Pokemon resists the hit well it's still going to go down to this explosion anyways that's how much damage it is but with the choice band we still have a lot of other good options that hey return is like a mini explosion that we are running about what what is that 2.5 times damage on the explosion compared to return but return is still a 100 base power move that becomes electric gets stabbed gets galvanized boosted and then has insane choice band damage as well so you might be able to just ko something off of that but overall we're slow pokemon so max out the hit points max out the attack tank up a hit and then explode and kill everything now also what you can do is you can mix it up a bit that way you can survive some of those weaker special attacks from pokemon and then you still survive you still choice ban and then you still murder everything so golem is just going to find a lot of success and be very powerful like that um yeah that's kind of it i was also looking into the idea of a graveler that graveler is still 95 attack explosion so you can run choice band on the graveler you can run life orb on the graveler you can effectively do the same thing but you aren't going to be as tanky 55 hit points 45 special defense compared to the 80 65 so Graveler is going to have some problems, but it's kind of the same idea, and it's still an insane amount of damage. Also, Quick Claw, you can run Quick, Quick Claw on the regular Golem as well. They just outspeed them, boom, explosion. Like, it's a pretty nice thing to have, and the Choice Band is really only there for, like, super bulky Pokemon, or Pokemon that are going to resist you. If you just Quick Claw with an Adamant Nature or a Brave Nature, or whatever you're running, just max out the attack and you'll be fine. And then you just hit that explosion. Yeah, it's pretty fun when you land the Quick Claw, because Quick Claw does have a 20% chance. So, 1 in 5 chance, you just outspeed and kill your opponent, even if they had kill pressure on you um other things about the golem is that trick room doubles trick room with a ranguru works so well because you have telepathy so trick room protect on that golem for the first turn and then golem now you can safely run that life orb and you just protect into either double edge instruct which is also really awesome right there you can go for return instruct if you see that as well or you just explode so that's going to give you a lot of different options because trick room is going to be up 
Potentially two of your opponent's Pokemon are going to be dead. Oranguru can still instruct whatever slow Pokemon is coming in. So you followed up with like a Wishy Washy that's going for insane amounts of Surf damage. Like Golem is just the main opening Pokemon right here. And the thing is, you can play with your opponent that it's like, okay, if you lead Golem or Oranguru, your opponent's going to think, well, Golem's protecting, so I might as well focus down the Oranguru so it might not be able to set up its Trick Room. Well, then Golem, it could just straight up explode if you can read the field right and just get the damage out. Uh, another thing your opponent might do is they might try to go offensive on the first turn, then protect on the second turn. Well, if you just explode first turn, you still get your Trick Room. That could be pretty awesome right there. Maybe even Quick Claw. Now, the problem is in Double Battles, your damage is going to be split. So, Quick Claw might not find the right KOs that you're looking for. It'd be pretty funny if, like, Outsped Quick Claw killed something. Oranguru is safer because now it had an effective Sweeper, giving it that Trick Room setup. But I think Protect Life Orb is all you're going to need. And then Double Edge Life Orb with the Instruct can work out pretty well because if Golem can secure both of those KOs, then survive for the next turn, it can just run something else. And it can explode the next turn and then just get a two-turn win just like that. Now, Ground-type Pokemon are going to be an issue. Uh, there are a couple of things to worry about with the Golem, but I just love the idea of the Oranguru. And then you can do some shenanigans right there with a ton of damage. Then Oranguru does Oranguru things for the rest of your team. Some other things that Golem can run... Once Custat Berry becomes available in Pokemon Sun and Moon, that could be a really fun thing to run, that you just go Stealth Rocks, you tank up a hit, if you su survive before below a quarter, Custat Berry activates, you outspeed, you explode, and now you have Stealth Rocks plus a dead opponent's Pokemon, which could be pretty good right there. Um, this would also be with the Galvanize, so Stealth Rocks Explosion, or you can go for the Autotomize. So, Autotomize into Life Orb, if you can tank up the hit well enough, now you're outspeeding a lot of your opponent's Pokemon, hitting them with the returns, hitting them with double edges, and then just just getting the end all explosion so the autotomize could be used later on in the game as well that if the opponent's already missing some health that you can maybe go for two for one three for one on the autotomize alolan golem and it's actually not that bad with the speed so 97 speed getting doubled isn't going to be like the most insane stuff but you're still going to get out speed on a lot of different pokemon that can work out pretty well and then as we recently saw on a fan fridays we have power of alchemy muck with the explosion because galvanize and all of those other like pixelate aerial aid all those eight abilities they do some really interesting things because explosion is still getting 20 percent more damage it's just not getting the stab but muck still has a respectable hit as well so thinking about weird combos like that could expand your horizons of damage and whatnot but i just really like the idea of Oranguru or just using Golem as the ultimate one for one it's now 5v5 or potentially a 2v4 depending on the double battle situation and now it's time for some damage calculations because that's really the main thing that we're looking into when it comes down to the Golem so Brave galvanized without any items just max out attack investment against Silvalli in double battles is enough to KO that should be really the only thing I need to show you guys. Like, yeah, the, the average uninvested and even, like, some tanky invested Pokemon are still going to get blown up, even in doubles. If we're talking about singles, it just gets worse from there. We tank up the hit, we explode, things die, and it gets pretty crazy from there. The next one we have is Tapu Koko, which is a really interesting one, because Tapu Koko brings the electric terrain. So that means even in, like, a single battle with that resisted hit, you're still nuking it pretty hard. In doubles, you're still finding KO potential on the Tapu Koko because it's bringing its own demise right there, and that's without an item. If we're running something like the Life Orb, our damage starts looking better even in the single battles. Like, single battle shows, if we had no electric terrain, still KO it right there on that Life Orb. And then Choice Band, it's just choice band you know you you go and wreck everything for crazy amounts of damage also with the electric terrain boost showing that return is almost enough to ko double edge is almost enough to ko same thing right here on the sil valley that no item return and double edge is still looking pretty big well if we had choice band return that's enough to ko the sil valley so that's why i really like the idea if you go life orb double edge it, even in double battles with that instruct on the oranguru it, it leads to just, okay, now I can KO some things, and since it's a third of my health in recoil and I'm doing two KOs, I should have enough health to still survive and then get another thing in for the next turn. So, just big damage all around for the Golem. Uh, some other damage calculations. Graveler's damage does drop off. But you can still KO something like a Weavile in doubles if you are running the Life Orb. So, no item looks kind of bad, so Quick Claw... Like, if you see no item, assume Quick Claw right there. So, still has some KO pressure. Then Life Orb. Yeah, Life Orb Graveler, you know? What if you do that? What if you do Trick Room? Just, you have Choice Band Graveler. Actually, that works. That works. So, gonna dial it back for just a second right now. Because when you think about it, 
The only reason why you need the life orb here is so that way you can run the galvanize, ex like, protect explosion. So you protect explosion with the Oranguru, then now you can choice band the Graveler, make up for that lost damage, because Trick Room's up, you just immediately explode, and then that's how the Graveler's gonna run, so you can hella gimmick this one, I think it'd be pretty awesome right there. So yeah, choice band is going to be really big damage as well, and now, hey, look at that, we don't have to worry about things surviving anymore. Uh, what about the Sylv Valley? Okay, so Valley will survive in doubles because of split damage. And then one thing that I kind of glossed over is that Oranguru still does its own thing. If Golem is going for the explosion, Oranguru doesn't have to instruct that because there's no target to instruct. So it just gets chip damage. That's like, alright, whatever needs to die can die. And I feel that, like, if we had some special attack investment and then, like, hidden power ice... That way we can at least break through something like a Garchomp, we can break through those ground type Pokemon, or we can get some damage in, hit in Power Ice, and then like the Psychic or whatever. So Psychic's gonna be enough damage to follow up, and then KO the Savali after the Graveler. You know, it's it, everything just dies under the Trick Room, and then we're going to be okay. Uh, I wanted to go and pr bring up the Oranguru, see what it takes to take out a Garchomp, because four times super effective on the Hidden Power Ice is really nice, but what does it take? So that's gonna be... 54 without special attack. Okay. So yeah, Hidden Power Ice is just going to be strong damage on the Garchomp, but it's not going to be like KO pressuring. That still shows, like, you can double edge, KO something, Garchomp goes for Earthquake, and then you get a free Hidden Power Ice while still surviving pretty well, because the Earthquake split damage is not going to be that fantastic. So Ranguru still can do something with that Hidden Power Ice. And then I was just looking a Alolan Golem against something like the Drampa. So special attacks are going to be our biggest issue. Like physical attacks, if they're neutral, no problem, 130 defense. But special attacks kind of shows why you might want to go for a split, like 100 in special defense or something like that. That way we can survive a Dragon Pulse and then get that damage down on the explosion. And then that's just how big the explosion damage is. Life Orb explosion onto Drampa. It's a resisted hit. Drampa is fairly bulky. Like, look, that's hit point defense invested. And explosion still KOs it through the resist. So Alolan Golem. Very fun, very combo heavy, very gimmicky, one for one, just silly Pokemon right here. Biggest problem is, it is very, very easy to read. You see Golem, you're thinking it's going to do one thing, that's explode, switch into your ground type Pokemon, and then Golem does nothing. So, it is a bit unfortunate right there what could happen, but if you can uh, get the right plays in, Golem becomes one of the highest damage Pokemon in the game. And just does some insane stuff. So, if you guys enjoyed this video, hope you all have a nice day, thank you very much for watching.